Okay. Well, Dave, we're getting ready for uh, the start of another busy time for you, another game coming up thick and fast. But just a, a quick word from yourself on that latest development that came out yesterday from the EFL, of course, scrapped on the day testing and uh, before matches. No late call-offs. Got to be good for the supporters, surely. I think that's why it's done. We, listen, we test every day of the week, even as days off. Um, it's our match day mornings now. Um, so Morecambe was the first time we hadn't tested on the on the morning of the game. Um, the fact that we do it the day before and all week, I think you've got to be extremely unlucky to then get caught. You know when you're doing it six days out of seven or five out of seven. Um, and, and I think no, no, there's an argument to say that we should still carry on doing it, and, and I'm not I'm not against that. However, I think when you see that. You know, I know Hull and Blackman got caught off in the midweek, really late on, and it's not there's, there's nobody's fault, but the people who lose out on, on that are the supporters. They're the ones that have travelled all the way across the M62, and and they get quite quite rightly a bit annoyed. It's such a late call up, but then if there's COVID cases in anyone's squad, then it, you, you've got to do that. So you know, there's no right and wrong answer. People's health is, has got to be at the forefront of it. But at the same time, you, I think the FL have took a bit more of a, a pragmatic view and saying that five or six times a week is probably enough. And if you're out on a big green pitch, then it's probably not going to be too too much damage done. But obviously, one or two teams might get caught on the day. Um, you know, with the, with the positive case that wasn't the positive the day before. So I don't think there's a right and a wrong answer. I just think it's probably maybe, maybe the start of the beginning of the end, if you like. There's still a long way to go. We, we hope it's the beginning of the end. Um, I, don't, I don't know what else to say other than that, really. Well, your group of fans who travelled away were certainly on a high at the end of the game at Morecambe. They've been snapping up the tickets for what is a, a shortish trip for them on the, on New Year's Day to go to Burton. They're on a high. Your players were on a high when you saw that celebration. Is that something that you just have to have a quiet word with the, with the group that just make sure that uh, you know, you're back down to earth and there's a lot of work to be done still? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> we're not getting carried away with a 2-1 win at Morecambe. No, you can. You could, if we win two one over at it's top of the Sunderland, is it Rotherham? You can't get carried away. You can't. You, that's that's when you get you know the shock of your lives. Football is a habit of, of kicking you when you least expect it, and we've got to make sure that we're prepared for a tough afternoon and a tough test. Jimmy's teams are always always tough and always set up um, well. So we've got to make sure that we know exactly what we're going to face. It's going to be a different challenge. And we've got to make sure that we hopefully see the, the Penguins again running across to celebrate with our players a winning goal. I mean, the fans, dressed as Penguins. <laughs> yeah, brilliant fancy dress. Uh, just looking at one or two things in general. You know, you brought Alex Neal in a, a few weeks ago, uh, spotted him around... Uh, 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 on on the other night, of course, he's still around with you. How are you finding his import? And, uh, you know, now that he's been in there a few weeks? Well, anyone who's managed in the Premier League, Scottish Premier League, Championship, Scottish Championship, is worth listening to in my book. The fact that he's a close friend, um, the fact that I trust him, because we played together for a long time and we've got the same values and we, we believe this football should be played in the same, same kind of way. I'm going to listen to him, but no more so than Kenny or Alex Morris or, or John Dillon or Fred or Aidan Callan or anyone else, Lee Bell. You know, he's another voice. He's just a bit more experienced than all of us. And he's, and he's been at a higher level, managed at a higher level. So he's been helpful. There's no getting around that, not just to me, but to all the staff and, and some of the players. He's allowed to speak to the players on match days as well. Because I think he it says the same things as well. What I'd say to them, um, and, and he's, 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 he's humble, he shows humility, he knows, he knows what, his, what his role is, um, and, and, he's, and he's here to help, and he, I think he has helped, I think he's, he's, helped, he's helped us all, and 
if that continues, then that continues. He's just doing it, you know, as a favour, really. Um, you know, while whilst he's he's been offered jobs here, there, and everywhere that is, you know, that is is not quite right for him. I think I don't know, but I think <laughs> um, I would assume I should. I should that's probably um, so. You know, that's that's the that's the level of of the relationship and. And what I'm getting from it personally, I think what everyone's got from it, I think, I think it's probably coming at a good time. I think we've we're over our rockiest patch. That first third of the season was extremely tough, um, and this middle third, I think there's the shoots of the growth are appearing, um, and that's going to continue. Well, I just want to look at it for you on a personal note, of course. January means five years in charge as a football manager. There's no mean achievement. You're right up there in the, in the top uh, football league managers for, for service in that particular role. When you look at where you are at the moment as, as a team, is there anything that stands out that you could probably use from that experience that you had then when it was danger time to be a football league club? But is there any sort of things that you can use in in your, in your way you're managing now to get your club where you want to be by the time we reach May? I think you've got to have unwavering belief in your own players. I don't think that's changed. It's been challenged. <laughs> not getting around that. Um, but I, I can remember the first, first day of the job going, yeah, I'm going to back these players. You know, you've got to. And that's the, that's the case now, all of them. Every single one of them. Um, you know, and I think you've got it. That, that's that's got to remain, irrespective of league, irrespective of position. You know, you saw, you saw the celebration the other night. That what that wasn't reflective of um, anything other than a unified team that wanted to do the very best for the football club and the fans that had travelled. Um, you know, it's, you hear stories about other football clubs. <laughs> Maybe, maybe they haven't told me, but I haven't heard one about this football club in, 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 in a negative fashion because the culture that we create, the, the, the togetherness that we um, try and obtain is, is part of the DNA of this football club, it's part of, part of our DNA. And I think when I first came to the job, that wasn't quite right within the group and it wasn't quite right within the group that filtered down to others in the building. I don't think that's the case now. I think, you know, we've had 17 year olds train with us all season. Not, you know, not, not one player said a bad word to any of them. I'm not giving them advice, but that's not but in the right way. And likewise, 17 year olds have been pushing older players, you know, and running, running them and running past them and what have you. And, and that's, that's healthy. And that's what this football club, um, sort of, and that's the DNA of this football club. That's the philosophy of this football club. And, and you know, if there's one thing, you, you can't be afraid as a manager to, to go with your gut instinct. And, and I think there's a bit more, a bit more of an educated guess five years in than there was five years ago. Um, that's for sure. Um, but I think that you know, this football club would be magnificent for me personally. And I hope I'm, I'm repaying them with with what we're trying to do and what we've done on, in, in this last five years because that's what we all want. And I'm just... There's no doubt about it, Dave. You have built some real good teams and had some terrific individual players that you've progressed and gone on to the championship under your, under your managerial team. And you must feel proud about that. It's important that continues development of, of your own players. And I think in all, on the other night, eight started, Travis come on, made it at nine, academy players involved in, in first-team football? Yeah, that's a big part of this football club. I think that's not just me, and Kenny or Alex, that's that's all the way down, or, you know, through Aidan, through all the coaches. Um, and they, they do a fantastic job. I think we've all had a hand lower down. At, well, certainly I have, and I know Alex has, Lee Bell has, and why have Kenny has, and all these players, we had them at, nines, tens, elevens, twelves, thirteens, whatever it was, and now we're seeing it at the other end. And it's important 
that we teach them properly. You know, we've all seen the report with the 11th best academy in the country, the best category two academy in the country. And we spend an absolute fraction, absolute fraction of what everyone else spends. That, that doesn't half help with, um, you know, with, with our first team. And we've got to keep developing players. We've got to keep making bold decisions. Like I said, we, all our second year scholars have trained with us literally from day one of pre-season. And they found it really tough. It was the year before they were coming into the football club for the first time. And they've all had it tough at certain periods. We haven't tried to break them. We haven't um, hammered them in any way, whether that be like physically, you know, like running or, or asking too much of them. And you, you, you sometimes get pleasantly surprised. And if, and if they don't surprise you, then you just give them time. Um, and that, that gives me enormous amount of pleasure, I have to say, seeing, seeing someone forge a career. I'm not just talking about, obviously, Zach's the obvious one, but we've got a real good group. Um, and, and, you know, you, you, end, you, you end up seeing them leave the football club like a Harry Pickering, like a, a Perry. <laughs> and, and, you know, forging a career for himself. I spoke to Mark Venus at, at Blackburn yesterday, and he was, you know, he was made up with, with Harry Pickering, for example. He, he, he said, I just don't worry about him left-hand side of the pitch, he said, don't worry about him, consistent, his values, his humility, his work ethic, and and, and that's 90% of it, he's down to Harry himself. And then you can't, you can't deny that this football club has helped Harry, you know, mould in that way. And, and that's what we try and do. And that's why we do get nine players on a pitch um, on a cold Wednesday night in Morecambe. You know, it's not it's not the easiest place to go and, and ply your trade. But the, the players, all of the players, not just the all on academy players, but deserve huge credit for, for being able to play the crew way, to be able to play how I want us to play. And that's um that's testament not just to me, but to to everyone. To everyone in this football club. And that's you know, I'm I'm grateful. I'm grateful that all the coaches sing from the same hymn sheet. I'm grateful for you know the chairman and the board believing in the academy because that gives us a, a good platform. You know when we when we made nine changes in the last round of the Papa Johns and we beat Doncaster, who only made two changes, then that I go what what a great victory that is, and that shows how strong our academy is and strokes shows how you know how how we're playing and how we're how we're going about our business. We haven't got the resources of Sunderland and Sheffield Wednesdays and Rotherham's and all these other teams, but we'll just go about it our way. And hopefully that produces players and keeps us in this league. And every now and again, you know, might even do a bit better than that. Well, we saw what it meant to your players and your fans and even yourself and your management team at the end of uh, the other night because you celebrated. But it, it's fantastic because psychologically, off the bottom of the table, close the gap, still up half a season to go, it must just give you that extra confidence. I know you've got confidence in your players, but the players are going to have some confidence and it, it's going in the right direction, surely. Yeah, I, the thing is, I've been honest with them all the way through. There's no point trying to... I, I, you know, our presentation at the start of last season was very different to our presentation at the start of this season. There's, there's no point, you know... There's no point lying to them. I've only said it another word. But there's, there's no point lying to them. They, they know where they're at. We knew where we're at. We, knew, we found out fairly quickly where we're at. You know, the first five games before the transfer window showed was, it wasn't good. You know, and even then, after that, it's like, we've got to find our feet. We've got to bide our time. We've got to invest time and, and coaching and, and listen we're not out of the woods by a long long stretch we're third bottom of the league but I think everyone we've won four of the last seven and if we keep going like that then we're going to be fine but that's the challenge we're giving ourselves the chance and compared to where we were two months ago that's improvement and if we've got to keep improving you know it's not it's, it's nothing uh, there's no achievement 
by winning four games in seven. It's, it's, it's not. But from where we were, that is improvement and we've got to keep improving. So we win another four and seven, then we win six and seven. That's the challenge. That's the challenge and that shows the, um, the development of a good team. Um, and that's what, we've got to, that's what we've got to become. I can't believe you've just said that we're third from bottom. We are, aren't we? Yeah. You, you've, 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 you're brilliant. I thought you never looked at those league tables. I've got you. One nil. One nil. You, you, it's one nil. You, you, you told me. <laughs> I knew you'd come back on me. I knew you'd come back. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. I only dropped the bottom of the table and I thought we were next to bottom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, just going back seriously then, Burton are, are similar in, in ways that they are well thought of football club, aren't they? In, in the lower leagues, they go about the job well. You know, the, the chairman leads from the front as well there. Yeah, listen, what a, what a terrific example of a sustainable football club. You know, similar to ourselves, you know, Ben Robinson. I've met him a few times on, on courses and stuff and a real humble guy, clever, clever man who knows how to run a football club. You know, he's, I think his daughter's now running Wrexham as well. So he's obviously passed the genes on to his daughter. Um, you know, it's, they should be held up, I think, a bit like ourselves, as a beacon of sustainability and how to run football clubs. Um, you know, and, and I can't speak highly of, of what they've done there. Um, they've obviously got an experienced manager in and an experienced assistant manager. And, and they've, got, they've got good players. They've got good players. Um, and they do it their way, and their way works for them. And they've been a League One team for, for a long time now. Um, you know, and, and that's, like I say, a credit to the stability and the security that the chairman and the board have put in place there. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a good game. You know, we, we went there last year and had to score a, a cracker of a goal for Moen to get something from it. And, you know, I think we caught them on an off day early on in the season. And we've got to be, you know, we've got to show what we've been showing in recent times because I think that's what's going to be demanded of us. And if we do that, then we'll, we, we should have a chance to win the game. Thanks for talking to us. Here's to 2022, boss.